Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization Fitness Myth Series, video number six. Barbells are a must for growth. What? This is a myth? How dare I? I thought I was Mr. Barbell after all. So here's the claim, generally as people sometimes actually say it, but at least imply. If you want to gain the most muscle, you have to do the barbell compound movements. The fuck big three, brother. Squats, benches, deads, fucking overhead press. That's right, that's four, but whatever. If you're not doing them, another claim is that you won't get max gains. And if you do them, but you haven't been doing them, you start doing them, your gains will improve, right? So like someone will be like, oh man, I'm really struggling with my back. It's always a bro, always in every comment section, like fucking deadlifts and barbell rows, brother. You can't fucking go wrong with the basics. Turns out you can, bro. But how, you ask? So here's the thing. Why is this a myth? On pure biomechanical and exercise physiological theoretical grounds, damn, that was a brainy statement. On those theoretical grounds, there really isn't a compelling reason why barbells should, on principle, just work better than everything else. It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, maybe there are reasons, but you know, I've been to school for a long ass time, been a professor for a long time, maybe exactly of this shit, I don't know. And none of my colleagues know either, right? So maybe we're just all out to lunch. And that could be true, could be we missed something. But it gee whiz, you know, it's at least not obvious that barbells should reign supreme just on principle alone. In addition to that, they've done tons of studies where they compare various machines and barbells and dumbbells. And generally speaking, barbells and dumbbells and machines compare relatively favorably to each other. Right? Some are worse than others and some are better than others, but there's not like this categorical thing where like in the research barbells have been found to be superior or compound movements have been found to be superior. This is not the case. Sometimes isolations are better, sometimes compounds are better, sometimes barbells, sometimes machines, uh, sometimes dumbbells. It's all over the place. Generally, everything's roughly pretty comparable. Roughly. It doesn't mean exactly, but roughly. Right? And another piece of you know, indirect evidence, but something that should at least get you thinking is tons of top professional bodybuilders do much less barbell work than expected. And kind of in a hilarious twist of irony, the most vociferous proponents of barbell training, the ones that are like, you got to book, do the barbell moves, are like intermediate recreational power lifters, been lifting for like three years. They've done like two cycles of starting strength, and like anyone who doesn't do barbell moves is a fucking idiot. It is never gonna get jacked. And like my instant reaction, which is mean and I almost never say in public, um, is like get jacked like who? Like you motherfucker, you weigh 140 pounds, bro. You're 5'9", what are you talking about, right? And they're like, like all oh, the barbell compounds, like, like who does? Like pro bodybuilders, you ever seen them train? They do all kinds of cable crossovers and shit. Yeah, they do some barbell compounds, but it's not all they do. It's not even the majority. It's not even remotely. It's a small minority in many cases. So at some point you gotta be like, yeah, are we building like a house completely out of straw? Maybe. However, there are some grains of truth to this, as is almost always the case. For many people, big grain of truth, the barbell compound movements can have really high, what we term raw stimulus magnitudes, their ability to, to stimulate muscle growth, forget buck fatigue, whatever, tons of fatigue too in many cases, just smashing in muscle growth stimulus is often really, really high. Like if someone comes up to me and they're like, look, nothing I'm doing, for my back is getting my back to grow. And I talk to them, they're doing some machines, they're doing some dumbbells, they're doing some cables. And I'm like, have you tried higher rep sets of, you know, five to 15 deficit deadlifts or deadlifts? And they're like, no. Like, have you tried barbell rows? They're like, no. Begin to do those. Because on raw stimulus magnitude, they just slap muscle and pounds of muscle on your back. Not for everyone, but for many people that just fucking work. Now, are they fatiguing? Hell yeah. Are they more injurious sometimes than machines? Yeah, also that's the case. But gee whiz, you know, if they don't grow your back, you're a special snowflake or quite unusual or something is amiss. So yeah, sometimes these shits work really, really well. Squatting for quads, especially if you're well built to squat or you have good squatting technique. A lot of times, man, people who complain about their quads being small and you look at their squat technique or the fact that they're not squatting, you get them squatting upright, et cetera, Tom Platt style, sets of 10 to 12 in the squat. Oh my God, they come back later, pants torn like the Hulk. Hopefully pants torn in a way that doesn't reveal the genitals. Do you guys ever think about that? The whole Hulk thing with the pants? I'm sure other people have spoken or written about it. What the fuck? 
are the Hulk's pants made of that they stretched like 3,000%? That's not the most impressive part. After he's no longer the Hulk, his shit comes back down in size. I mean, is he always wearing the same insane superhero stretchy pants that are modeled to look like purple cutoff jorts? Ugh, who the fuck wears jorts? I look, if the Hulk wears whatever, I'm like, bro, it looks good on you. But if he's Bruce Banner, man, I scare you a little. Do something. But then he turns into Hulk, and I'm like, it was all a huge misunderstanding, sir. In any case, bench presses for chest. Look, big benches build big chests. If it doesn't hurt your shoulders and stuff like that, if it's the right fit for you, but for a lot of people, it really is the right fit. Barbell inclines, barbell bench presses, they built my chest super big. If you look up some of the world's top bench pressers, you look at their chest, you're like, what the fuck happened to that guy's chest? There's a Daniel something or other from Iran. Google Daniel powerlifter, Iran, bench press, super heavy. You look at this motherfucker's chest and you're going to be like, there's no such thing. There's no way this is a real human being. He built his chest with barbell compounds, okay? They real, they work for a lot of people. Uh, and if you avoiding them, and some people like, especially with the new like Doug, Brignol, the Brig 20 stuff, people like trying to avoid the barbell compounds, uh, you might be avoiding some of the best lifts for size for you. And you don't want to do that, like categorically avoid them, right? You don't, you definitely don't want to do that. In addition to that, if you learn to do the barbell compounds very well, your technique on pretty much all of the other lifts, machine lifts for that same muscle group, et cetera, generally tends to get better because barbell compounds teach you how to produce a shitload of force and generate your own stability and proper positioning and really good technique. If you can learn to bench press with proper positioning, with a barbell powerlifting style, when you get on any chest machine, you learn to retract your scaps, lift your chest up, push through your pecs, Every machine becomes better. If you know how to barbell roll properly, you can use every back machine better. You guys ever see people, I don't mean to talk shit, I mean to talk shit. People at the gym who clearly have never actually lifted weights before and they're just like, they look up, uh, they walk up to an exercise and they look at the diagram on the shit and they just start doing it, like, which is totally cool, right? Real talk, like they're like, I don't know, 60 year old is just trying to get fit for the love of God. Totally awesome, you're totally welcome in the gym. But some of us who know a little bit more, we're looking at them do the thing and they're doing like machine chest rows and they're like, and you're like, do you, you do know that you have a back with which to do that. It's not, not all just biceps and rear delts. But if someone knows how to do proper bent uh, over barbell rows, if they know how to do stuff like a deadlift, blah, 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 every time they use a machine, they really know how to feel the muscle. Because shit, if you can feel a muscle, technique-wise, mind-muscle connection with barbell compounds, oh my God, you're so good at mind-muscle connection. If you can feel it through that shit, you'll feel it any day in a machine. It'll be the easiest thing in the world. So there are benefits and grains of truth to the fact that barbell moves, barbell compounds are fucking awesome in many cases. So we got the pluses, we got the minuses. Where does that leave us as far as best practices to take home and go forward with? Here's the thing. If you personally get high raw stimulus magnitudes, like just get really fucked up in the good way from barbell compounds or for some of them, or even if you get high stimulus to fatigue ratios, like for me, barbell bent rows are great high st- uh, SFR exercise. Like I get a ton of stimulus and not a lot of fatigue, especially if it's deficit rows. I don't have to use as much weight. My lower back's not as involved. Oh, beautiful. I love it, right? Uh, you know, seated barbell press, incline press. If these exercises work really well for you, fucking do them. And don't let anyone tell you, like, oh, technically speaking, physics or whatever says that you're not supposed to be doing comp. the fuck out of my face, you tiny motherfucker, right? JK, sort of. Point number two, if barbell compounds are something you've been doing or someone told you, you got to do barbell compounds to grow, God damn it and you have pretty low stimulus to fatigue ratios on them, or they're lower than they used to be, um, you can do machines and dumbbells for a while to resensitize. Like, even for myself, for a long time, I would never remove barbell squats from my programs because I was like, well, my legs are just going to get small. No amount of hack squatting or leg pressing or Smith machine squatting is ever going to fucking get my legs big. I have to have it. I do all that other stuff and I would do it, but I always have to do barbell squats at least once a week. And then I was finally was like, okay, I know enough. For the love of God, I have a PhD in this shit. Theoretically, this shouldn't be a thing. And I wa- moved away from barbell squats for a short time, for first for like two months. And everything was fine. And my legs grew. And I was like, oh, holy shit. What the fuck have I been doing? Because by then, barbell squats are super stale for me. I came back to it. I renormed my technique. And it was great after. You don't have to be addicted to these lifts. Yeah, the core barbell movements are awesome. They don't always have to be in your program. If there's a month or two where you're feeling like, oh, they're not super fresh. They're stale. My joints hurt. Back away from them. Go to machines. Go to dumbbells. 
then you can bring them back in later when they feel better. And even if you could fix the technique up a little bit, get a bit more mind-muscle connection, better stimulus to fatigue ratio. And lastly, if just based on who you are, your anthropometry, whatever, your best stimulus to fatigue ratio exercises, the ones that work the best for you, the most stimulus, least fatigue, least joint pain, et cetera, the way they give you the best pumps, the best tension in perceiving the muscle, the best soreness, et cetera. If those exercises for you, and even the best raw stimulus magnitude ones, the ones that really, really hit you and like really kill the muscle, if they just happen to not be barbell moves, like you get literally more out of hack squats for your quads than ever got a barbell squatting. You get more, you know, out of machine rows than barbell rows. Like people like that are real. They exist, right? We're all like that sometimes if we're stale on the movements, but sometimes some people like stale, not stale, the just barbell compounds, like, or many of them just don't do them the justice. Like they've read all these magazines, the same ones you and I have. They scroll all these Instagram accounts or tons of assholes being like, you got to do the fucking barbell compounds to grow. They did all that shit for months and maybe years, and they just never get amazing results. They always got hurt. Their joints hurt. And then they switch to machines and dumbbells and they're like, oh my my God, I'm growing like a weed and my body feels great. If you are that person, as long as you're being honest with yourself, what I mean here is the barbell compounds are fucking hard. For me, a lot of times I don't want to do barbell rows. I don't want to squat. I don't want to upright row. But I know for a fact these movements work well for me. So just have to nut up and fucking do them. So if I'm lying to myself and just trying to avoid the work, no, no, no. Shut up and do the barbell compounds. But if they really aren't working that well for you, an honest, honest, honest assessment. Because at the end of the day, nobody gives a shit. If you either get big or don't. Nobody cares, right? So you have to be honest with yourself. If they really don't work that well for you, you don't have to do them today. You don't have to do them tomorrow, next week. You never have to do them. And the ultimate little, little gem I'll drop on you here, sample size one, it means hardly shit, but it's a fun idea just to make sure we have like sort of proof of concept. Um, Phil Heath, I ain't never seen that motherfucker do a single barbell compound in any Flex Magazine picture, any video ever. Clearly, I'm, I'm almost certainly mistaken. I'm sure he's done a few here and there, but if you honestly follow his training to the extent that he releases it, it's like almost all machines, Smith machines, cables, and sometimes dumbbells. Phil Heath got like that doing that shit. And don't worry, you're not going to shrivel up if you don't do barbell compounds. And if you do shrivel up, get back to doing them, folks. That's all I have next time. Sorry, good God, I fucked that up. That's all I have this time. See you next time. <laughs> you can just leave that in.